Good morning, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. And today we're gonna talk about I don't know. Today is August twenty fifth, two thousand nineteen, Sunday, California time. And let's see. Good morning, Bartholomew. Jay Simpson. And good morning, good morning, Simus Slack. And good morning, Zitron Crazy. Simus Slack. Is that is that how it's pronounced? Or、oh, Siamus Simus Simus. Okay, it's uh, it's there. What there? Degway says, "Good morning, Degway." Hi, Xa. Thanks for your email reply. I did post the link in last stream YouTube, but it didn't show up. Okay, I, yeah, YouTube is problematic. You know the censorship stuff. So Degway is it was showing me a Japanese Tokyo keyboard congregation keyboard meet uh Japanese mechanical keyboard meetup. You know, there's lots of photos and、uh, lots of do-it-yourself keyboards from Japan. You know, maybe I should show up, show the picture, post the link again or something. I well, so what's the topic today? Um, good evening from the Netherlands. Hey, Netherlands. Okay, Nicholas. Good morning. Um, Simus. Okay. So,、uh, what is the topic today? So, should we do JavaScript or should we do TypeScript live coding or should we do GoLang or should we do maybe some Python or Emacs stuff like keys doing Vim Golf? Beat the fuck of the Vim Golf, <laughs> Vimus, yeah. Or should we do、uh, some some Emacs tips, practical Emacs tips? You know that's usually useful to people. Or we can do、uh, some practical Emacs Lisp coding, and I'm gonna teach you Emacs Lisp, the power of Emacs Lisp, and、uh, all other stuff. It can be、uh, it can be non-technical. You know, if it's non-technical, it's all over the place. It's going to be. You know, then Google is going to ban me.、Um, so Bethlehem says, "I want to inform you that you should not worry about swearing on the channel. Nobody will get deleted." Yeah, that's true. Swearing is fine, but well, you are in Germany, right? So I don't know how much you you follow the news of the culture war, so-called culture war in USA. It's really bad. So if I do swearing, that's okay. You know, not too much though, because right now I don't have, I don't make money on YouTube. But I'm at a point where I can press a button. You know, it's like apply. You know, because I have now one thousand followers, I can press a button and say apply. I'm not sure I wanna do that. You know, because well, anyway, so. Swearing too much is a problem. If you swear too much, then you, uh, you, you know, you're gonna be a in a gray list. Also, but when you talk about other things, there are certain things. You know, it's okay to talk about in any non-white nations. I mean, it's uh, but not you cannot talk about it in USA or 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 white white countries. Emac Lisp. Okay, so so Emac Lisp, Golan, Elisp. Okay. So we got two votes for Emacs Lisp and、uh, one for Golan. So Bartholomew says, "I know a lot about cultural war, but I know really I know reality from my personal experiences as well." So my recommendation of flat Earth dumpster fire.、Uh, see it with your own eyes.、Uh, my, my creation of the to see it. Yeah.、Uh, it's、uh, you know if you guys don't know about. China、uh, Cultural Revolution. You should check it out. Look it up. Okay, China Cultural Re- Re- Revolution.、Um, and there's a great film called、uh, Farewell, Farewell, Far, Farewell, My Concubine. Okay, let me type it up. 
So Xotalk show and what is this? Show in browser? Oh, my starting up Firefox. But I was thinking of a plan to dye one's whiskers green and always use so large a fan so that they cannot be always seen. <laughs> okay, that's a line from Alice in Wonderland. Uh, Alice in Wonderland is one of the uh, work that's cited by mathematicians and logicians all the time and often by programmers too. Well, not, not so much by programmers, but in math. Um, okay, so let's see, Emacs Lisp. So we shall do, thou shall do Emacs Lisp. We, uh, yeah, okay, so let's do maybe Emacs Lisp then. Uh, my vote is 420 votes worth. <laughs> what? I've spoken with Chinese people behind the Great Firewall on the old net on an old net so what's the old net okay so let's do emac lisp so if we do you know that maybe we you know let's not talk into other things you know technical so emac lisp what um well usually you see my problem is picking a topic you know like if we were talking about something then you know i can start talking a lot about it but you know, from from scratch, uh, I would have to pick a topic. You know, usually I ask you guys to to give me a topic, but usually that doesn't work because you guys don't know what to, unless you know, like normal. I mean, normally you 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 don't have like you have to think about a topic, or if you are working on something, then you know at that moment you have a question you know oh I, I want to know how to do this or how do you do this thing or that but in general out of the blue you ask Emacs people what's your you know questions you have people cannot tell you know even though they do have a lot of questions so maybe today is more chatty it's just I, you know I chat to you guys it's like this is a real live session you know <laughs> talking to people Talking to people from Germany, from uh, Netherlands. You know, Netherlands, I never got a clear idea where that is, but I do now for 10 years now. You know, ne Netherlands, like, the, it's too, like, so too Asian, I guess. Uh, or, you know, actually, this is true to any people, you know, f foreign places, like outside of your area. The further away it is, you have no idea where they are. So, yeah, so for example, in in Chinese people in China, they wouldn't know, you know, the general location of New York or San Francisco, or, you know, it's just, it's just a big city in USA. Meanwhile, you ask any American, where is Beijing or Shanghai, like with their relative location, you know, these, these two are the biggest cities, half of them wouldn't know. You know, and not to mention other cities, you know, Chongqing, you know, so many cities. And similarly for Europe, you know, if you haven't, you know, if, if, you're, if you are in America, you never visit Europe, you don't know uh, what are the locations. Anyway, Scandinavia, you know, that's the northern Europe, but Netherlands is actually part of the main European continent, like to the west of Germany. Uh, well, that that probably sounds silly to you guys. <laughs> yeah, of course, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> okay, so alternative internet, zero net. Okay, I don't know what's that. Um, I haven't heard of that. I need to debug my copy paste function. Okay, do you have a question? Like what the um, Nick? Good morning, Nick. My topic, 8.55 p.m. Bethlehem Mew, uh, why Golang is so good. Your topic, you, you, you have a you, uh, YouTube channel, feel free to post it, okay? Uh, Nick says, you copy two lines when you, then when you paste, there is an extra new line after the first. Uh, well, yeah, that depends on how you code it. 
you know, if you if you like, you can post your code, and maybe we can debug it. So Nick is actually from Brazil, maybe even more mysterious to the average Chinese. Uh, well, yeah, you could say that, but I, I'm I'm somewhat familiar with with Brazil because I lived in Paraguay for half a year, for a year, when I was uh, 14 in 1984. So Bartholomew says, by the way, anti-Chinese, uh, uh, let, let's talk about technical topics. Okay? Let's focus on technical topics today. Okay, here's a question. A question from Kerrick. Kerrick says, on Lisp, you said in the past, I believe one of the one of its main limitations is the restrictions of the Emacs engine. Can you just run GNU Gaia in Elisp compatibility mod to break it free? Yeah, you can. The thing is, GNU Gaia has been around for like twenty years, and it's not mature. Yeah, so you know you can you can do that. You can use GNU Gaia as a Emacs Lisp engine, but it's like building a Linux from scratch. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, like well, a better comparison is use Windows. You know, just buy a laptop. Windows is already installed. Just use it. Or you can use Linux. First of all, you buy a laptop. You have to find out. You have to do research on whether you know the laptop is compatible or not. You know, then even on the Linux side, you know, there are some uh, Ubuntu official Linux website. They say, oh, this, 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 these laptops are compatible. Okay. You buy that, then it's not actually, well, yeah, it's compatible, but then you, you start to install, you got problems. You spend half a day, two days, then your screen wouldn't light up because that's my experience. Actually, let me show you. Uh, you know, and I've been. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, uh, I've been doing uh, Unix admin for 20 years. Well, 20 years ago at least, you know, then the screen won't show up. Then you go to, st go to Stack Overflow, you spend hours. Majority of those answers are like 10 years old. <laughs> Stack Overflow on uh, Ubuntu Linux, you know. Then you, oh, the, the, uh, the group and whatever, you know, the booter, in the, then, then you start to read about them you read them you know uh yeah and eventually you put it up you, you know oh then you turns out okay try try this distro then do this and do that go to the go to the uh you know the uh, the the root console you know the single mod use single user mod then you <laughs> after you set up then whenever the linux goes to sleep when it wakes, it won't wake. <laughs> you got, then more hours, more hours spent. That's like, yeah, that's the state of GNU Gaia. You can try it, you know, you can try it yourself. Uh, what what you really want, you know, is for Gaia to be, you know, just like people can download Emacs. Okay, this is Emacs compared with GNU Gaia. Download it, just use it. Just like, you know, just like normal Emacs. That is the way to go, but that's not going. That's not happening. That's not happening. Being, that's not happening. Being twenty years, twenty years. You know the GNU, GNU dev. You know they fighting over it. The, before it was, you know, a uh, common Lisp versus scheme Lisp. You know the people fight these wars. You know it's like Emacs versus Vim. But in Emacs community, there's common Lisp versus scheme Lisp. That's a big uh, flame war fight. By the way, do you see, is, is my lip synced? Is my lip synced to my voice? Is it all right? Because sometimes I notice the, the video, um, like a, it's not synced. So let me know if it's, it, it is synced or not. So anyway, so it looks like you guys don't know about Gaia. You know, Gaia has been 20, it's 20 years old. Okay, Gaia, Gaia. Okay, my cyborg, yeah, bathroom says, yes, your cyborg body, body manages to sync your lips <laughs> well to your internal speaker. That's great. 
Okay, great. Uh, so let me let me maybe we can I can tell you the story about Gaia because I'm uh, I'm ancient. <laughs> Gaia. Uh, okay, Gaia. My God. <laughs> great talk, Gaia. That's well. I'm not sure we, whether we should talk about that because then it's gonna be thirty minutes about about the free software foundation, the you know the utopia vision of you know free software back in two, year two thousand. That that's the origin of Gaia. Okay, in, in year two thousand, the language the most popular language is Perl, scripting scripting language. Now. Today, scripting language is familiar to us. You know, you have Python, you Ruby, you have lots of others. Even GoLang can act, you know, work as a scripting language. You know, you just type it and just run. You can use it to do, you know, clean up directories, you know, sysadmin, you know, minor stuff and stuff. But back in year 2000, scripting language, scripting language is kind of new, you know, the higher, higher language. Yeah. Well, you have Lisp, of course, that's, that's the, the, the days of the Lisp. Everyone is, oh, Lisp is this great thing. Anyway, so you have Perl, Perl is basically the only one. So, and then, then, then Tico, TCL become popular. Uh, actually, I'm not sure I want to talk about this because then I'm just going to show you lots of my websites and uh, I, I talked about it many times, you know, in my videos. It's history, you know, it's history. But anyway, the, in summary is that Perl is the most popular scripting language. You know, it's uh, the first one, popularized everything. Then you started to have TCL, TCL, okay, TCL by this guy, okay, and he uh, it's you know suppose it, they say it's a Swiss Army you know Swiss Swiss Army knife you know they like you know, programmers idiotic programmers they like to say those these kind of things all the time every every day you see it every day like like today today you have something else you know JavaScript or oh, TypeScript or oh, oh, React JS or oh, Angular fuck. <laughs> they they gonna they gonna change the world yeah. So anyway, back then, Perl was the most popular. Then you have Tico, you know, this, Perl is, you know, people say Swiss army of knife, gluing, gluing language, like, you know, uh, so useful for everything. Uh, and back then, the main language is basically C, C++. Java is beginning to be there, you know, some microsystems spend millions, literally million dollars on every magazine. Anyway, C, C++, Perl, that's the three top most popular language. C, C++, Perl. C Sharp is not invented yet, okay? You don't have .NET. .NET came around around 2004 or something. Java began in, in, in 1995, and some microsystems put huge amount of money on it, on advertisement. So anyway, Perl. Then you have Tico, TCL, you know, that's competing. Then and this is year around year 2000 okay this is when open source just began uh, be becoming main well just starting to you know become mainstream because linux and perl mostly three things linux perl apache okay you know back then you have the you, you have the phrase lamp stack okay lamp l a m p l a m p so let's go to uh, talk show. Uh, where is my talk show? My talk show page and go to uh, search for sections and go to this is today. Um, so, so whatever today's topic, uh, L-A-M-P, okay. That's the acronym. That's That, that stands for Linux, Apache, M is MySQL, and P is Perl. Okay, that that is a stack everyone uses. You know, that's a, that's that's been the case for at least five years. Like ubiquitous. You know, that's the main thing. Uh, because I mean, they are all open source. The open source movement just began, and uh, uh, sphere headed by this basically these four. Oh, P P is PHP actually, <laughs> not Perl. <laughs> but anyway, Lamp came came after. So this is even before before Lamp. So Linux, Apache, MySQL just began, you know, before MySQL you have MSQL, okay, M, 
SQL. That's op uh, that's before my my SQL. It's an open source database. Uh, okay, so so open source just you know and and the Netscape around 1998 they released their you know their browser into the open source you know so that that is the first industry major open source. Uh, movement by a company by, by by a dying company who by by that time the Netscape is already dead you know is no value basically when some software project you don't have value anymore you become open source like you announce it oh we we, we believe we deeply believe in open source we are going to release our software into open source <laughs> uh, and uh, they they did that and it, it, obviously it's no help uh, eventually, they became Firefox. Firefox took off. That's that's five years later, two thousand five. Anyway, so so you have Perl and you have TCL and uh, the open source, the free software and the open source. They are enemies. Okay, in free open source is a uh, like a branch of of the free software. They are enemies. Anyway, then the Richard Stallman back then you have a GNU. New word, a GNU <laughs> a new word. Okay, that I subscribe to that online magazine. You know the vision, the utopia is that oh, open source. You know Microsoft is going to be dead in ten years, and so we, you know, we are singing the songs of the GNU, the the GNU, a uh, GNU new world. Um. Well, I, I should show some of my articles then. Okay, let's show my articles. Because there is a lot. There's like tens of articles about the, all these things. You know, then I'm just going to <laughs> show a lot of old articles. So should I do that? Do you let me know, okay? If if you, you want if you like to see that, say yes, because I have a lot of articles about these things. Then you might read the details about this history. So anyway, so uh, in year two thousand, open source, you know, just began to st started to become mainstream, and uh, and uh, the scripting language, you know, the language popularity is C, C plus plus Perl and Java. Okay, maybe Java. Uh, that's about that's that's about it. You know, back back then also no like today everyone knows several languages. Back then. You know one or two. That's all. You know you're you you've been programming for forty years. You know like uh, you know n mostly like you are you know you are master of just one or two languages. You use one language to do things anyway. So the so so the GNU they 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 want you know they they the the thinking is that they want they need a uh, they need a language for the GNU operating system okay it's <laughs> that's 40 years vaporware the herd uh, um, uh, okay so let's see what what so what topics you want to say uh, want to see so okay Apache Groove Apache Groovy 2 Apache Groovy uh, okay, I don't I don't know much about Apache Groovy. Apache Groo Groovy is a uh, I think it's uh, based on Perl, kind of like you know went into Java language. Um, it's a Perl like C of scripting languages. Mm, that depends on what you mean. This well, the syntax is like it's a mix of C and Bash, and more more on the Bash side. You know, it's like orc. Um. Yeah, P P in lamp is PHP. I, I'm getting a picture. We are walking into the herd together. Uh, when will that be stable? <laughs> yeah, herd is a vaporware. I don't. Th you, you know, it's not going. Never going to happen. Um, I, you know, I was a deep believer of herd. Fuck the Richard Stallman. You know, I I was a deep believer in herd. Uh, you know, I I despise Unix. And I, I, you know, I'm so I despise Vim. I'm into Emacs because it's to me, it's uh, you know, it's proper. You know, it's it's better. You know, correct. You know, it, you you think about things. You think not unthinking. Unthinking. That's a Unix. C, that's unthinking. Well, we are the fast fastest or sloppy. You know, Perl the fuck. 
So I was deep, you know, believing in her. Anyway, so that's long history. So uh, I, I'm not sure we. Nushao. No, I haven't heard of Nushao. The thing is, you know, today, since 10 years ago, there are new things every, almost every month, you know, this great, fantastic thing. I mean, it is great, you know, there are many new shells and stuff, you know. Uh, I think there's one called Fish. Uh, you know, there's so many now. It's like every day there's a new thing, you know. It's, this is what, this is the result of technological, you know, ex exponential growth. You don't even know it. Uh, and and many of these are you know they are good and you know as you know there are so many grep replacements you know they each you know each each one is faster than previous one every three years. Uh, but we came to the point where you don't you don't care anymore, like you know this bash and uh, and also this kind of this shell kind of things you know the programming has moved on <laughs> you know you don't you don't live in shell anymore you don't that's not important you know the important thing is you know python uh goland the programming languages you can you can write any tool like in 5 minutes you can write a grip in goland or any any others you know in python I, I because i have done you know i have a version in python in goland i i showed in one of my talk you know one hour showing all those um you know uh um yeah because you know so <laughs> right now i'm not sure what to talk about because then because every like it's almost like every sentence i want to show you 10 links <laughs> of my website <laughs> Uh, like for example, I can show you my Go Golang grep script. This is this is my Golang grep script. Okay, so it's just 156 lines. You know, if you know Golang, you, you study Golang for a week, you can write it too. Uh, and let's let's show let's show some examples. Okay, so go to Ksar Talk Show, go to Ksar Talk Show page, copy the file path. Okay, hold on a second. Let me start the Emacs command start command log mod. So on the left window, you can see all my Emacs command. Okay, such as move forward, backward, up line, previous line, next line, delete line, undo. You know things like that. Showing on the left window. So copy the file path of this buffer. Go to the GoLand uh, grep uh, script and search for search for. Uh, wait. Uh, search in this directory okay start talk show and let's search for haskell because it's mo the most dramatic word <laughs> among programmers okay now i run the program run it okay here's the result now uh, expand the window and put in xa find out mod so we got color then press the arrow keys you see this is the occurrence of haskell occurrence 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 in this file, next file, next file. So three files ha contains the word Haskell. So let's look at this one. Press enter, jumps jumps to the file location. You can see Haskell word is here, and show in browser. Ah, okay. So this is actually the main page. So let's show some other. So let's see. Let's go to this one. Open. Ah, wait. Okay. Uh, enter. Open. Show in browser. So this is Star Talk Show, uh, March fifteenth. Emacs list sitemap, Python syntax, land design, type theory, Haskell. <laughs> okay. So anyway, so that's my grep. You know. So so back to the topic. So grep. You know, you anyone can write a grep. Um, you know, there's people like to say, oh, you they use arc, uh, silver, or whatever, whatever the grep. You know, the. Um, yeah. So anyway, so what? So what is today's topics anyway? So, we, oh yeah. So let's go back to the Gaia history of Gaia. Now, so back in two thousand, you know, Perl is the most popular language, and uh, and uh, the free software is beginning to become, you know, they they start to got mainstream uh, recognition. Then the Richard Stallman, the Free Software Foundation, they want a scripting language for their operating system, for their you know herd, you know, for their system. So they decided it's going to be Gaia. 
So what is Gile? Gile is just an implementation of Scheme Lisp. Okay, Scheme is a one of the Lisp programming language, and uh, back then there was a war between Common Lisp and Scheme Lisp, very extremely heated war. Uh, you know, Common Lisp camp, and 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 this war happens in Emacs too to this day. You know, uh, because every time you know. This this has been happening, you know, for 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 twenty years, uh, at least. And, and still, so in Emacs, you can, in, you know. Um, so anyway, Gile Gile is an implementation of Scheme. You know, uh, one you know one implementation. It, it's supposed to be the the scripting language for the GNU operating system. The vision is that you can you can you know the Gile is designed you know it's it's also vaporware it's vaporware for for 20 years now kind of you you can use it but it's not it's not stable okay so the guy is supposed to be you know the vision is that okay you can co you code e anything everything in guy sky is so powerful you know the lisp language is so powerful that it will just compare to uh compare to c compare to uh uh uh, whatever you know, it 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 can compare to Perl. <laughs> yeah, to yeah, it's actually said you know it, it can compare to Perl or, or TC or other languages, things like that. It's supposed to be the the grueling language for everything. Well, as time went on, now twenty years, Gaia is dead. You know, it's it's dead long time ago. It's dead ten years ago. You know, uh, the the GNU new world, the GNU uh. uh I'm not sure I uh, phrased that correctly. Let's 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 look up my articles. Let's see if I can find it. So search for that, and also search for Xali, uh scheme, uh, history of scheme. Um, I don't know what. Um, let's see. Okay, Kasali, my programming experiences. Kasali, my programming experiences. Okay, so wait. Kasali scheme. Okay, let's see. Let me, I'm trying to find my essay. I write essays here. Programming language. Programming la programming scheme and failure. Uh, this is written in 2009. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> here, here is someone says, "How do you explain that something as inferior as Python beat Lisp in the marketplace, despite despite starting four years later?" <laughs> this is typical. Okay, this is a typical thought from these Lisp fanatics. You know, there's a uh, lots of them on 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 Compland dot Lisp. That's a news group. News group you you may not know. It's a dead. It's like a forum, online forum. Okay, news group. I don't know if some some of you probably know it. Still, maybe you use it even. Uh, you know, but to most programmers, they don't know what that is. So anyway, how do you explain that something as inferior as Python beat this? Okay, that, that's a, that's a common thought. Okay, among Lisp's fanatics, they believe that because they believe. This is truly the greatest language, but but why is the why is Python becoming popular? You know. Uh, and then the Rain, Rainer Joshik. Let me let me tell you who he is. Okay, he is a common Lisp fanatic. He is the most the, the, uh, um, uh, among all common Lisp fanatics. He is is one. He is probably top three. The mo the fanatic among the common Lisp fanatics. <laughs> and here's what he says. He his answer is the same way like VHS beats the film formats for home video. The same way it will be beaten, you know. So this is also very typical and common, very popular answer to this question, this type of questions, you know. And this this VHS thing, I don't know. Are you guys familiar with VHS? Probably you know if you are young, probably not today because VHS, you never seen it. Maybe it's it's a tape, okay? It's a video tape. You know you have CD, you have DVD, you have DVD right? Play DVD playing videos, movies right? 
but before DVD, I mean DVD is or or you know obsolete already. <laughs> Today is all streaming, right? Uh, so DVD before DVD, you have um, VCD video disc. You know VCD popular in China, but not in USA. But anyway. B the big thing before that is videotape, VHS videotape. Now, so what's uh, what what is they saying here? Well, when when the videotape just got invented, there are different competing form formats. One is VHS, the other one is by Sony called something uh, I forgot. What's the name? Eight mm or something? You know. So okay. So <laughs> Bartholomew, you are old. Uh, okay. So. Um, so anyway, there's a war, you know, like DVD, like a Blu-ray. Okay, well, after DVD, then you have the Blu-ray versus uh, what's the other name, <laughs> and and Blu-ray is also obsolete, you know. <laughs> oh my God, we are so old. So Blu-ray versus there's another one. What what's the guys? Help me out. What's the Blu-ray versus what's the other one? Uh, well. We can go to Wikipedia, but that's gonna take time. So, um, Blu-ray versus what? Uh, writable uh, DVD, something called uh, something like that. Oh God, you guys don't remember? HD DVD, yes, that's right. Bartholomew, thank you. So, so when when so after DVD, then then you have the new technology, Blu-ray versus. HD DVD, you you know more capacity, more resolution, every everything. Then the HD so the, the industry, you know, they move the movie houses. They make both, you know, they want to sell, and the the machine makers. But eventually, HD HD DVD lost lost the war. So Blu-ray is the you know everything is just Blu-ray. But even but today Blu-ray is dead too. You know, almost like very few people use Blu-ray. But anyway, so this is one of, one of the war. But before that, with videotapes, you have this VHS versus beta. Now, supposedly the beta, uh, so these are how they look. The bottom one is VHS, the top one is beta. I never, I've actually never used or seen it, the beta. So this is 1970s. I was born in 1968. So this, <laughs> you know, I, I was like under 10 years old. So anyway. So there is this war. Suppose supposedly the beta is much te is technically superior, but however VHS won for reasons. Okay, and also if you guys know the Mac versus PC, that's a big topic. You know, flame war back in 1990s and uh, even in 2000s. You know, Mac versus PC, Windows, and uh, of course Mac. It's not popular. It's always like ten percent, five percent, ten percent, five percent. Yeah, uh, you know, population use. And uh, when it comes to Mac people, that's also what, what they like to see. Like they like to say, you know, it's all bias. They like to say, oh, look at you know VHS versus beta. Or oh, another way they say is that look at cockroaches. You know, cockroaches are uh, aren't they popular? Yeah, they so popular. But are they? Do you really want to be a cockroach? You know that's, that's that's you know what they say, but but uh, truly it's really actually idiotic. Um, you know you like to believe you know so if I believe in Emacs, of course, um, Emacs is the best, most superior you know editor. But but there's a question, you know, why why is Emacs not popular? Why why isn't e, e, you know everyone using Emacs? Oh, I got a lot of reasons. For example, most people are idiot. That's why. <laughs> and of course, Microsoft they do evil things. You know, <laughs> they killed Emacs. Or uh, look at P, you know, look at VHS versus versus Beta. You know, Beta is the superior one, but. Uh, you know, or do you want to be a cockroach? You know, that that's what uh, people say. They they don't. You know, you don't really actually look at the true reasons. There are reasons, of course. You know, if you look at everything, how things are in history, there are you know plausible reasons. I mean, this this is not like physics where where you can actually find the answer to something. It's more exact and it can be verified. But if but but 
if you analyze historical things, you you know different people will have different interpretations. But still, you can kind of, if you really try, you can kind of come up with you know the reason why. Well, in general, this popularity thing, you know, of Emacs or editors or programming languages or you know VHS, they are they have good reasons, mostly social reasons. You know, the timing of the you know. Um, for example, why 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 is Emacs? Let's say Emacs versus Vim. Okay, typically there are uh, more much more Vim users than Emacs. There are ten times more Vim users than Emacs. Why? Is it because Vim is actually better? No. What, there, there's a good reason why. Because first of all, I, I can tell you why. Because VI is bundled with every Unix, but not Emacs. That is why. That explains basically ninety percent of the thing. Linux is bundled, and you know, after Unix, you know, then Linux. Linux is bundled. Every Linux is doesn't matter what distribution. They are bundled with VI or Vim, you know, or variations VI. And uh, this is a major reason that you know, in universities, in academia, professors teach. They gotta teach. You know, they. Well, yeah, you can always install Emacs, but that's one extra step. So, you know, people learn VI, especially in India, I know, because I know Indian programmers, especially in e India. They teach VI as part of the, you know, if you study Lin uh, Unix, you know, it's part of the, you know, programming uh, computer science education, you know. That is why, and people don't, people are, you know, habit is a strong force. So once you learn VI, Maybe you heard that Emacs is more powerful, or whatever. But you already know VI. You know, just <laughs> you know, just move on. You know, you got better things to do. You you need you need to find a girlfriend. <laughs> you gotta you gotta climb the la ladder. You know, you not, you need to find a job. You know, do programming. You you know, so that is why. But that's not the reason Emacs people think. You Emacs people, you know, just like any code or bias, they they think oh. You know that, that that's crap. The same thing happened here. You know exactly like the these people. These these are the things you hear every day. You know, and this happened today too. Today is on you know different things uh, about how J JavaScript or you know if you are a JavaScript coder like the few few days ago last week we talked about that some young JavaScript coder they are thinking they are thinking oh JavaScript is truly the greatest language. <laughs> it's the future. Okay, pr probably we are not talking about any technical Emac list today because it's, you know, as I know it, it's gonna happen. You know, now it's uh, forty minutes. But anyway, uh, in general, you know, when you watch videos. You you know I like to do technical you know because my blogs you know I I I really like to do really technical stuff in math, you know GoLang or whatever, and usually my my language uh, essays they are not you know. They are some language and language issues that you cannot find on Stack Overflow, so you know it's like, anyways and and, and you get you don't get uh, readers or you know. Have a you no know, most of the, first of all people don't know what you're talking about because you have to learn the stuff for a year. Then anyway, my point was that when you go technical, even that's what I like because because I like it that way because that actually shows you you know I like to do something that's more important you know somewhat because that means I have done work, you know, I have done this work and I, I, I show, I give a presentation about whatever, as opposed to, you know, the lots of YouTube stars, 1 million, 2 million, 10 million followers, you know, that, that, that guy just got 10 million followers, uh, that, that guy, who's his name, you know, the most popular YouTuber, you know, you look at them, they are just drama, oh, <laughs> you know, every day, fuck. Playing games, video games. <laughs> they, they got, they got uh, viewers. Um, anyway, so so let's go back to talk about this drama, drama. Then, okay, scheme failure. Okay, so in this article, um, okay, let me read it a bit, a bit. Okay, so I say, wishful thinking, 
tech geeking idiots always think that it's a psychological defense mechanism. When you are the loser, you enjoy fancy adages to comfort yourself. Thus, Mac people, Lisp people, and Unix people, when it comes to Microsoft, always quote the same old VHS, VHS uh, versus beta. In my life experience and interest on this issue in the past five years, I found that the world is basically pretty fair. All things considered, successful are successful not because they are devious. Successful people or products in any industry may be computing, singer, mu music, software, business, are due to reasonable causes, social and or technical. For example, the mundane, hard-working, good price versus performance ratio, and good advertising, talent, and with perhaps a little what we have to call it a uh, fortuity. You know, so that's that's what I think. You know, I still believe that is true. You know, successful people or companies not because they are or the, they are doing evil empire. You know, that's not true. You know, when maybe when when they became successful, when when they become hugely powerful, then they become evil. Maybe okay. Well, <laughs> actually, that's probably true. Microsoft, you know, Google, we can see um, uh, Facebook began evil any, anyway. And Twitter began good, okay, and but now it's evil. But anyway, in general, it's, to become success, successful, it's not it's not devious things, okay. It's rather, you know, hard work and uh, you know, you know, the right ad, you know, the uh, good marketing, and part of it is uh, luck. Okay, hold on a second. I think my roommate is back. Let me close the door. Okay, that's my roommate. Um, so actually, so anyway, that's my complaint about scheme. And uh, yeah, another common misconception is that Lisp people they always like to say everyone is copying Lisp. <laughs> you know, when when Perl come up with it, Lisp, you know, oh, Perl is just copying Lisp. And uh, did a bad job. Then Python come along. They say, "Oh, Python!" You know. Then some people, idiots, you know, programmers, they say, "Oh, Python is a Lisp." You know, before it was Perl was a Lisp. This is common, by the way. This is not you know one, one, once in a while. This is you hear a lot programmers say it. Okay, in in programming communities, you know, when Perl is popular, they say Perl, Perl is a Lisp. Perl is a you know, or sometimes you hear is Perl Lisp done right? You know, <laughs> well maybe maybe not that one for Perl, but Python. Okay, so sometimes you hear is Perl, Python is a Lisp done right, or sometimes you know Python is a Lisp. It truly idiotic. I I did a video uh, last week uh, that I talk about Lisp. The whole entire one hour is about Lisp. What makes a language Lisp? When can you say a language Lisp? Okay, that's one hour uh, talk. So check it out. Check it out, guys. On um, that that video is about Lisp. Uh, and you know, then then Ruby, you you will hear is Ruby is Ruby a Lisp? You know, like you can search right now. You you will find it. Ruby a Lisp. Uh, you know, or Python is a Lisp. This man Ruby Ruby. Um, usually it happens in the in in the. You know, like for example, this one on Quora. Which language is more similar to this JavaScript or Ruby? Anyway, you you will hear that Ruby is a Lisp or Python is a Lisp often. Usually happening in forums like Hacker News slash dot. You know the comments uh, or Reddit. You know. Idiotic, you know, ex extreme idi idiocy. Everything is a Lisp, and 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 by the way, it is true that many programming concepts originates from Lisp. Okay, this includes list. Okay, list. You know, today every language has list. Uh, macros. Okay, uh, list macros. A lot of language has list macros today. 
you know, or they they try to have it. Closure, you know, the the closure is also a concept from Lisp. I, yeah, for, originally from Scheme. Less lexical scoping. That's also from Lisp from Scheme. Exceptions. That's also from Lisp. Okay. Originally, but 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 Lisp's exception has nothing whatever to do with Python or Java's exception. Those idiotic people, fuck the programmers, <laughs> and fuck Unix philosophy, <laughs> fuck the Unix people. Uh, anyway, so let's let's read the comments. Let let, let me keep con you know the conversation. <laughs> uh, is there any editor? So so Kit. Carrick says, speaking of Python, is there some editor that is to Python what Emacs is to Lisp? Yeah, there is. Uh, basic, but yeah, there is. That's called, um, that's commercial. That's commercial software you have to pay. Uh, it's called, anyone remember the name? From this company. Um, uh, okay, so, so let, let me read the comments. Keep the comments coming, okay? So, Let's see how many people are watching. 13. Okay, so maybe 10 more minutes random talk about. Um, let me read the comments. So you're talking about you want a good Python editor. Yeah, there is a good Python editor. I tried it for like one hour. I'm not impressed. I'd rather just use Emacs. But it's an editor dedicated to Python coding. Uh, and it's commercial. It's made by, I mean, by the way, this company is great. They truly do great um, editor. You know, they, their focus is on editor. Anyone knows the name? Type the name, please. For example, they have an editor for Java, for Ruby, for Python, for, uh, uh, yes, IntelliJ, IntelliJ, yes, thank you. Oleg, good morning, Oleg, IntelliJ. So IntelliJ is a company name, but they they now they branch up. I mean, they they make dedicated editors for Python, for Ruby, for web coding, you know, for Java and JavaScript. I mean, JavaScript, Pyth uh, TypeScript, anything web coding one editor, and they have that. And, and uh, let me mention, okay. I, I tried the Python one, and I, I I prefer Emacs. Okay, I tried the Python one for a bit. I am not impressed at all. <laughs> I'm not impressed. You know, I I find nothing, nothing of it is better. Uh, and I prefer Emacs for the Python language. Now, let me make sure of this for Python. But however, the IntelliJ IntelliJ company they produce editors that. In many ways, that's far beyond Emacs. Okay, far beyond <coughs> uh, what Emacs can 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 do. I mean, you can you, you might still like Emacs. Here's why. Okay, because they actually create um, a st static analyzers for the programming language, or in many cases, a, a compiler, a parser. So. Let's not let's forget about Python because in the Python case, I prefer the Emacs uh, than their Python editor. Okay, um, let, let's go to their website. They have several editors. You know, each one has a different uh, special name for different languages. Like Storm, there's a there's a PHP one. There is the um, Uh, languages. Okay, let's go to languages. And just, just, just show me the editors. Wh which page is it? Tools. Okay, let's go to tools. <laughs> okay, so many here. Uh, App code, Cilium, Data Law, Data Grip. What, what the fuck are these? Oh, GoLand. Okay, GoLand. GoLand is for GoLand. PHP Storm is for PHP. Um, PyCharm is for Python. Yeah, I tried that. I don't like it. Ruby Mine is for Ruby. Rider, I am not sure what Rider is. WebStorm is for web, you know, JavaScript, TypeScript, and so on. You know, so they have like one for each language now. Um, 
but let me say because because they are a company a commercial company they make money and they hire professional programmers so they are far better than open source okay they because they they have they have parsers and compilers they create customized and what's the point about that because in many languages you cannot for example in emacs <coughs> let's show you a emacs code okay so um for example uh, okay so here is my uh, emacs code let's go to top let's, you know so here's emacs lisp code you know you have syntax coloring and you know and so on and you have completions but uh, however those are you know the technology of emacs is all done by regular expressions okay <laughs> that's, that's the most stupid you know like a poor poor man's way to do syntax highlighting highlighting so let me explain so it's done by regular expressions meaning that you just you just find the words and you color it and you use regular expressions to find particular pattern and you color it in a certain way that's that's all as opposed to you actually have a parser for the language when you have a parser for the language you know you you understand every word you know every string every sequence of symbols uh, what's what what is their purpose what, whether it's building or whether it's from a library you know you understand a, a lot of that as in particular you understand variables when you see a variable for example in Emacs uh, for example let's see if I can find a function with uh, okay my function typically don't use variables okay so here here is example you know delete forward bracket pairs you have a, a variable you see it's so if you uh, syntax color by regular expressions there is no way to know this is you know uh, global variables or a symbol from somewhere else or it's a parameter in a function you, there's no way okay or, or extremely hard you know you, you got extremely difficult if you uh, syntax color by regular expression now here you see it's red because that's because I'm using the add sign that's a che that's cheating okay so I put a it's my own convention when you have a add sign something that means this variable is a parameter of a function okay so you can see you know it occurs in these places so anyway but if you have a proper parser for the language then you know you know a lot about that uh, about it and and you can color properly you know you can color if you it actually happens in one of the uh, IntelliJ, IntelliJ uh, editor where they actually color properly and this is impossible without a parser that is a key uh, so on average, in, and by the way, this parser will is not going to be the same as the compiler. That's a different thing because compiler, you can you, you know, it's quite different because when you compile a language, you you write a compiler and parser is part of it. You know, the first step, you know, you parse it, then you compile it. But that parser is different uh, for the purpose of when you want to do syntax highlighting or understand static static analysis that that parser is different you cannot just use that you know it's so so they actually have dedicated parser to to do these kind of things the uh, IntelliJ, IntelliJ so I have an article um, I showed that I compared all these different editors and the syntax highlight highlighting so let's show that I compared Emacs, Vim, and IntelliJ, and also browsers. For example, JavaScript in browser, they also syntax color. Um, okay, so this is not the article. This is another article, but um, this is another article this this article is about this article is about creating a language for for syntax for syntax coloring um, so there is an article where I compared uh, syntax color
yeah, it's it's buried somewhere. So how to write the major mod for syntax coloring? So you go to my Emacs website. You go to miscellaneous. So Emacs mis miscellaneous. Then you search for you search for syntax coloring in editors. So here this article compares syntax coloring of of uh, of like five or six editors. So we compared Emacs JavaScript mod. We compared Emacs JavaScript 2 mod from Steve Yex. We compared Vim. We compared Gedit from Linux. We compared Atom editor. We compared Sub Sublime, then Microsoft Visual Studio, then Firefox, then WebStorm. WebStorm is from the IntelliJ. What's the result? The result is Emacs, Vim, Gedit, they are idiotic. Okay, they are syntax coloring are all idiotic. They because the you know they are all basically based on re regular expression. I, I I actually don't know about Vim how it's implemented, nor Gedit, but I can kind of guess. You know, I know Emacs one. I I I, I can guess they are just based on sloppy, idiotic uh, regular expressions, which create inconsistencies. Because, for example, if you have a global variable named x, then you have another variable named x inside a local variable in a function. If you syntax color without a delicate parser, there's no way to know they are different. There's no way. They are just x, you know. And also, whenever you see x, you don't actually know if it's a variable. Because one of the symptoms is that typically they color a variable only when the variable is declared, like var something, like var something. For example, here, var text element. That text element is colored. But then elsewhere, the text element is not colored. <laughs> because why? Of course, why? Because it's based on regular expression. Because it's easy. When you use regular expression, you see var something. Oh, then you know that thing is a variable. You color it like a variable's color. But when that thing appears somewhere else, you don't know. <laughs> you cannot color it. You don't, you know. You know, for example, the return text element, that's not color. That's technically wrong you know this you should color all you know text element as variable so all these are done okay so the one not that are good are I don't remember the details you have to read the um, um, the uh, Firefox Firefox and WebStorm okay if I recall correctly these two do them correctly and especially uh, WebStorm from the IntelliJ, uh, IntelliJ, they can actually, they actually color, you know, they color lots of things. Basically, that can only be done when you have a proper parser for the language. And this is why for each language, you have to have a, a parser dedicated for that language for the purpose of uh, static analysis. You know, that's what they call it, static analysis. This this concept is popular today because like Haskell, everyone wants to have a language where you can know a lot of info before you actually run it. So you don't have so you reduce compile time errors or you turn any compile time errors to. I mean, you 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 reduce runtime errors. You tr you you want to try to move any runtime error to compile time error, so, so that you can you know uh, know it. Okay, I think I like digress a lot, like randomly. I don't know where I am now. So yeah, so let's just random chat. Let me finish the. Um, okay, let's copy copy here. So, type comments. Okay, questions. Let me go over the comments quickly. I don't know. I don't remember what I was talking about. Why are we talking about? 
editors comparison uh, IntelliJ. Oh yeah, someone asked a dedicated Python editor. So there's PyCharm, but I'm not impressed for that one. So just for Python, just use Emacs. Uh, speaking of Python, okay, so Kerik, okay, that's that's my answer. So uh, Kerik, I think there is look up Python I idol, okay, I guess that's another one. So Emacs is like Atom text editor, but from the 80s. Uh, I, <laughs> I don't know about that. So Yad Tahur, Yad Tahur, I use Evo Vim emulator on top of Emacs, that's great. Uh, Sim Simus says facepalm. I keep CY two paste in Firefox. <laughs> yeah, uh, chick stick Emacs. That's right. Uh, I IMS gets all the ladies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, you know, if you act, you you can go to IMS. He has his own website, personal website. You can read it. I haven't been reading it for for over for twenty years, but you. But now, now and then, you know, I I, I can I go see it, uh, and he has, you know, he's he he is very, you know, he's he's a nerd, right? Well, like me, he's a nerd, but he is, he 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 is not. He has no idea. He he's doing pretty bad when it comes to publicity, like you know, one time he picks something from his foot and eat it. Uh, you, you, you guys, you know, have you guys seen the video? Have you not? <laughs> if not, you know, <laughs> maybe you can check it out. So he, I mean, at least you dress, you know, you dress, you know, you dress up, yeah, you, know, uh, you know, even a t-shirt. But, but he's doing things, you know, he's saying things that, <laughs> you know, any public, you know, find it abhorrable. And he has been talking about girlfriend stuff. Um, you know, like, 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 you know, I'm, uh, you know, my name is IMS. I'm something, something. I like dance, and uh, and uh, if you like, if you share my something, something, <laughs> get in touch. <laughs> IMS. Uh. So okay, so the Windows is evil stuff. That is, uh, allo plastic defense. Oh, that's a uh, allo plastic defense. So, allo plastic adoption. So let's see what that is. Allo plastic adoption is a form of adoption where the subject attempts to ch change the environment when faced with difficult situation. Okay. Uh. Okay, so IntelliJ, yeah, so something from that family, yes. Hello, Ksa, hey, Oleg. Uh, PyCharm for 1500. What do you mean? So, what is PyCharm for 1500? What do you mean? Uh, editors eat a lot of RAM. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, yeah, one advantage of Emacs is that. <laughs> you know, it's lean, it's lean, you know, back like 30 years ago, Emacs is known as, you know, um, let's see, Emacs, 8 megabytes and uh, constantly uh, trashing, let's see, 8 megabytes and uh, constantly, uh, S stand for what? It it means like the disk is swapping in and out of the virtual, uh, constantly swapping. I guess <laughs> you know what that's one of the acronym joke about Emacs. And back then, eight megabyte is like the biggest you can have. You know the reach. You know. But anyway, today Emacs, you know, compared to all the others, the others uses ten times more memory than Emacs. Because I've tried, you know, I want. <laughs> One day, <laughs> I tried Eclipse. Eclipse is one of the worst. Okay, so Sima says Eclipse IDE has proper, not re regular expression highlight. Okay, but however, in my opinion, Eclipse is one of the worst. It's it's written in Java. When you launch 
All your CPU fans started to hoard. Ooh, yeah, <laughs> Eclipse. A a any any Java things you begin a Java or if you do Java dev, you know you start the Java virtual machine. All your CPU fans started to hoard. That you know that's you know I don't I don't have money, so my machine is like typically four years old. That's that's what happens with Eclipse or any anything Java. I hate hate Java. And Eclipse, yeah, at one time I compared or virtual or, or the Microsoft Visual Studio. You know, Emacs today you download is, is like uh, 120, 150 megabyte. You know, you download, you unzip it, you know, or, you know, unzip it, you know, they, it's 150 megabytes. Wait, no, no, bef no, when it's zipped, it's 120 megabytes, something like that. Oh yeah, I hate Java, don't you know? Bartholomew, you didn't know that. Java is the worst shit possible. Uh, <laughs> that And that is why I don't like Clojure, you know, otherwise Clojure would be great. But Clojure is like, it, it, it tries to integrate itself into Java in every way. It's to such a degree, you cannot learn Clojure without, you actually have to know a lot of Java stuff. Including the package, the environment, the JVM machine, the hot booting, you know, it gets complex. You know, you have, because every time you start Java machine, any time you run Java program, including Clojure, you start to compile Clojure, you have to, you know, because it's written on Java, so you, you actually start the Java virtual machine. And that takes, you know, it takes a while, you know, more than Emacs. That takes a long time, you know, start Java machine and immediately it sucks your memory. It sucks, you know, several, I don't know how much now, but it sucks half of your entire memory. The, uh, then, um, okay, so then, you know, so then you quit, you know, after you're done compiling, it, it quit. When you want to compile again, the whole thing repeats. So people started to think, we, you know, so there's a concept of hot booting, meaning that you, you, you always have the Java virtual machine running, uh, the, but then you have to set up configuration. Anyway, I don't like Java at all. Then there's the Java, you know, the environment, because for example, to, to, to do any closure, you have to download closure jar, then, then you, have, you have to have this Linux, which is like, <laughs> <laughs> entire package of config and fuck, you know, shell script, Linux is a shell script, and then, then you, you have this, this, that, then you have jar files in a temp directory, then, then you know, and, and I've talked to closure people, just like every other code idiots, you know, they, you know, you, sometimes you say that you talk to them, they, I mean, they, they are part of the Lisp fans, okay, they, typically Lisp people want to learn closure. And they say, oh yeah, Clojure is great, great. And uh, they are, oh, you don't need to know Java at all. That's patently false. In order to actually understand Clojure to somewhat a good degree, to be a good programmer, to know the Clojure language, you have to know Java uh, quite, in, in, you have to know actually quite a lot details, technical details of Java. Because Clojure, in documentation everywhere, they expose Java. They, it's, you know, when I started to learn Clojure, I was thinking, oh great, this is a Lisp, you know, family. You know, I love, you know, I like Lisp, you know, even I, I complain a lot, but in general, I like the, you know, nested paren. And it's simple, you know, a function name, yeah, and it's functional programming, I love it. So I learned Clojure, you know, I, I was thinking, Oh, it's in, uh, implemented on top of Java. That's great because Java is very popular, and uh, then you have all the million Java libraries av available to you, and also so you know we can you know so it's great. But it turns out it's <laughs> that's a pipe dream. But what it, it it turns out the 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 main problem is that Clojure is you know it's so called a hosted language like JavaScript. You know, it's not like a language by itself. It's so-called, you know, technically they, they call it hosted language. That means it's a language. It, it lives on top of some other environment thing. You know, in, in the closure case, you it lives on Java, Java Virtual Machine, and there's a version on on uh, Microsoft.net. Okay, so it's a hosted language. But anyway, 
but I'm thinking, you know, at least you can do it. In, you know, I, I, you can. It, it is a independent. You know, I can just learn closure. I don't really have to know Java. You know, that's not the case because in every way, in, 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 actually, I found out later on in, intentionally they try they 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 make Java as part of closure. It's it's like one thing. You know, it's not this, <laughs> but. The thing is, you know, when you talk to closure fans, you know, people like bias. This is what I'm calling, you know, bias and code. They don't, they don't see it. They don't agree. Like when you say, "Oh, uh, closure is, um, uh, in, you know, you have to know a lot of Java," they say, "Oh no, no, you don't have to at all." <laughs> That's, you, you know, you. you, you to me, okay, I don't, I don't know about you, okay, but but to me, that's like patent, patently false. That's like one plus one equals to three. In every judgment, you can ask any person outsiders. When you want to some, you want when you want to get some judgment, you know, a fair judgment. Usually, you get opinion from outsiders, not associated with any closure Java or, or political party. Then, that is one of the way to to get. You know, to 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 get a sense of what other people think. You know, anyway, in any however you look at, you know, closure is like, for example, entirely you know intertwined with Java. You cannot know closure well well without knowing uh, very some complex things about Java. Okay. For example, let me just give you one simple example. In closure. When you want to manip manipulate string, let, let's say take the first five character out of the string, you, you cannot do it. Okay, you have to call a Java uh, a class a method. Let, let me make let me make this clear. You have to in, in closure. In, I have a lot of articles. Okay, I have written about this. You know, search for Xali clo closure, search for Xali closure. Um, Java. Okay, search for that. Xali closure Java. You'll find it. So if you want to trim string or, or take the first five characters of a string in closure, you have to you have to write your code in in in, in a way. Closure has a way to call Java classes, uh, Java methods. There's a it's a particular syntax. Okay, let, let me show you. Okay, Xali closure call Java method. Okay. So you have to, you have to write this. Then, call the Java string class, okay. And and those method that is how you, uh, want how you take a substring. In other words, closure do not have its own string library. <laughs> Imagine that. You know, you want to do string. String, string is the most fundamental. Every programs you need need to manipulate strings. You call like like you know you call. You have to create a new Java class. You know, it becomes OOP. Fuck the OOP. You know, it becomes OOP. You have to use a Java method. Now, by the way, I think I read last week. I think you know, I just happened uh, to see. I think maybe they closure. They have their own uh, string libraries now. I'm not sure. I I haven't done closure for a long time. But uh, but anyways, this is an example. Okay, closure. Uh, let me. Sorry, closure, Java. Okay, lots of art articles. I want to, you know, because. Um, okay, this talk is getting very long. So these two articles, okay, closure, call, um, call Java method, closure, closure's pa popularity, a tongue, a tango with Java, and closure magic characters. That's uh, pretty bad. Closure, <laughs> why closure is dense. Okay, here is why I, I explain. So you know, I came to Closure out of you know, I I would love it because it's functional programming because it's Lisp, but I hate Java. Okay, but and and it turns out you know, Closure is like, it's not just like somewhat based on Java. It's like in inten this is intentional like intention intentional deep integration with Java, and later on I I understood why. I I understood this this article you know, trapped in Java train northbound is closure southbound is Scala, 
so why does Rich Hickey, you know, in you know, dragging Java into closure? Because Java is the number one, you know, the top number five most popular language. You have tons of programmers, Java, in the industry. Java industry is typically uh, enterprise programming, you know, very boring, but a lot of money, you know, the, uh, databases, you know, financial or whatever transactions, you know, very boring, enterprise coding. A lot of Java programmers, typically Java, those programmers, they are not interested in functional programming. <laughs> they are not interested in Haskell. Well, what is that? You know, they, that's what they are, you know, Java. So Clojure intentionally mixed in with Java because then you can tell these Java people, hey, come to Clojure, you know, we are, you know, we are, everything you know applies. You don't have to learn much, you know, almost everything, you know, this is like Java, but with a Clojure li library, you know, that is why. Th it is, you know, this is how Clojure is popular. This is the main reason, one of the main reason, okay. Clojure become popular, it's because of this. Uh, Java, you know, in ingratiating, you know, with Java. So I was deeply, uh, I was rather, you know, I learned closure. I coded for like t all together for one year. I was deeply uh, uh, um, not satisfied, you know. Um, and not because the design, you know, I think his design, you know, okay, something maybe I don't like, something I like, you know, rich hickey. Not because that, because, but because there's actually, you know, heavy, uh, intentional Java st stuff in Clojure. Now, by the way, if you are a typical programmer, maybe you don't see it because I see a lot of programmers. They are, they, they, they going around. They are, you know, hotshot programmers. They are the CEO. Oh, I'm the, you know, CEO or, or the, you know, tech, you know, the um, CEO executive. Uh, see, you know, the, 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 the tech, tech head, okay, of a company or startup, you know, they say, oh, oh, yeah, they are, you know, our company may use closure, but typically they don't, they are not like me or my type, okay, or, or maybe you guys, okay, they, they don't, when they do a language, they just, they just, they just code, okay, they don't really un need to understand the details, they just, <laughs> they just code, and it can work, you know, you can, you can, you know, you just code and do things, create software, and including, I would say, including book writers, you know, because I've read a book of Crozier, you know, he says, oh, I, I, you know, he's, I think he's a startup, some company, he, so he learned Crozier and he wrote a book, I read it, it's like, you don't learn things, actually, you know, you, what are you teaching, you know, there's nothing there. Uh, in, in, you know, in fact, I can tell you, you know, you ask any Clojure fans today, you, you ask them, they don't understand the details of how a Clojure, you know, the sequence, any, anyway, uh, it is, you know, at least how exactly it works. Because it entails Java, it entails the Java interface, then the Java interface, the Java sequence interface. Then that, that means you have to understand the Java interface thing well, you know, the, because the Java, Java is this giant hierarchy OOP tree where you have the interface, you have interface inheritance, then you have the classes, you have the instances, you know, the, 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 anyway, <coughs> that's closure, okay, so, that's, um, so what were we talking about? I don't remember. Yeah, I, I was reading the um, comments. Okay, so yeah, so then, uh, yeah, so I was saying one day I was, you know, I downloaded, uh, I think, Eclisp, and I also, you know, downloaded, you know, I think I tried the Visual Studio, and he, and and you look at, I forgot which one, uh, I think both, you know, when you start Eclipse, without any file, you know, you, you open an empty file, it's already, <laughs> it's already like two, one gigabyte memory usage. <laughs> <laughs> well, in Emacs, you know, you can have Emacs running for days, 300 buffers open. It's only five, you know, th that's, that's how much, you know, not much RAM, much less, you know, but in, in Eclipse or Visual, Visual Studio, things like that, <laughs> when you begin it, it's already, you know, 100 megabytes, 100 gigabytes. Okay, so two more minutes, I guess, then, then, 
then that's it for today. Let's, let's we say let's call it a day. Yeah. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, proper uh, actually company which makes editor called JetBrains. Actually, the company which makes the editor is called JetBrains. You are right. Yeah, my mistake. It's a JetBrains, not the IntelliJ. J is is their Java I uh, Java IDE. Yeah, Jet JetBrains. Uh, so okay, let me read the comments, and that will be it to vote for today. That will be it for today. Uh, so we, I, I think I rambled a lot, and uh, yeah, we were talking about GNU Gaia. You know, Gaia is like this twenty years old vaporware kind of. Uh, oh <laughs> yeah, Geopardy. That's right, uh, fifteen hundred. Oh, what about this new language server stuff? Yeah, so today you have the idea which is called, uh, I forgot the name, language server. I have written articles, um, uh, sorry, which that, um, sorry, Emacs, Girl, Elisp, okay. This article is my criticism of the enthusiasm for this language servers thing in Emacs. Because basically it is killing Emacs Lisp. Here, this article, okay. Emacs Lisp sucks, donkey ass. Please grow Emacs and Emacs Lisp, not external tools. Because today there is a fandom, there's an enthusiasm. Oh, that's, you know, there's a language server protocol. This new thing came up in the last five years or so. So it's a protocol. So 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 that so that means this allows IDE uh, or front front end such as Emacs editor. You can use this protocol to connect a server. So what the server does, for example, Java, what the server does is that it has engines, you know, dedicated parsers, compilers for different languages for Python, Ruby, Java, you know, Go whatever. So. So you have this language server protocol. So editors, you know, uh, uh, Slime, uh, Sublime, Emacs, Vim, can talk via the via the protocol to these dedicated language servers. So if Emacs wants to do syntax coloring, you can talk, you, you know, via this language server protocol. You you can talk to a dedicated, let's say, JavaScript. Uh, server, you know, uh, JavaScript language, you know, parser, server tool, whatever tools. Then the server will give you back some answers. Then Emacs can color properly without, without Emacs itself having to do the static analysis of the code, you know. So that is that is what it is, you know, language server protocol. So it is, you know, it is a great tool. It's one of the new technologies, great. But then. This is a this is a death knell for e, for Emacs Emacs. That's my opinion. It's it kills Emacs because the Emacs power so far, you know, because because the power of Emacs came from Emacs Lisp. Emacs Lisp, you know, because all, everything, you know, I you know, in every my mod, my coloring, whatever I code, it's Emacs Lisp. That's the power. Uh, which doesn't happen much in other editors. You know, Atom is written in JavaScript. As far as I know, it's not like Emacs Lisp. It's it. it and, and, and anyway, that's another topic. But anyway, back to so we haven't seen improvements in Emacs Lisp for like twenty years. Well, there's there's a little bit, but basically Emacs Lisp stagnated. You know, it's there's no. It's so bad. It's very bad. No namespace. I did a I did a video like two months ago, two three months ago. Check it, check that out. That's a good one. That's uh the title is why Emacs Lisp sucks. You know, it's a one hour. I give detail why Emacs Lisp is the suckiest language possible. Is here okay? Uh, uh, one of them. Uh, this one okay? Yeah, both of them. They are great. Uh, you know, if you like my stuff and if you are interested in this. Uh, check, you know, watch them both. Each one is one hour, more than one hour, in detail. Those are technical details. 
So Emacs is, is pretty bad. No namespace, no no libraries, no no nothing. So and it's not going. And now people are you know happy. You know people want you know the language server protocol. Oh, I I want I want the Python mod. You know for LSP. You know so that so once you have this, uh, you you killed the you know one of the outstanding power of Emacs because now every editor well Emacs you know just like every other editor you can just use this whatever de dedicated uh, wait okay my logic that's that's not a um, yeah uh, language server usually the server also runs on your own machine but anyway my opinion about this is that it, it, this this is posing a great danger of killing Emacs Lisp. You know, more and more, you will not see Emacs Lisp. You you will not see non-trivial, you know, heavy, you know, major progress, complex code in Emacs Lisp anymore. Rather, the code will be focused on you know these parsers in, written in other language. You know, then then in Emacs we'll just you ju you just have simple Emacs Lisp to to talk to the servers. That's that's bad. Okay, so that's that's my opinion about this. But to most people, you know, most people who don't know things, you know, who are not, who just you know, who just see this. Oh, yeah, I like Emacs. Oh, this is great. I want you know, I want some mod that uses this. <laughs> so in my opinion, this is bad. I what I really want is I want people to write fucking write in Emacs Lisp. You don't need these language servers, okay? There are you know I have given a list of great programmers who has all written parsers and compilers in Emacs Lisp, okay? But if Emacs Lisp is actually capable, then then you you know then Emacs Lisp is far more powerful, you know, but. But now with language server, you know they write, you know they write other languages. You 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 write these parsers or compilers in other languages because Emacs is, is first of all six times slow than than, than even Python. That's a fucking problem. Then you got other lots of problems, no namespace and this or that problems. And then the GNU devs got lots of social and political problems. There's no way to change them. Until the Richard Stallman steps down, unless you know, unless he steps down, then you know. So problems. So I, I like you know I call Emacs Lisp. Uh, it's pretty bad language, you know. Contrary to Lisp phonetic phonetics, you know. I I know a lot of friends. Some are my followers. Some are my friends. You know. I actually, I've met them. I talked to them, and they following me on Twitter, and. You know they are also you know so they also code Lisp. You know many of them has great, very popular packages, but then, but also meanwhile they <laughs> they don't see the issue the way I see it. Okay, they they are still think Lisp is Emacs Lisp is great. You know they don't see this. They don't have the point of view like I'm ha I have. You know. I think you know, like the Emacs Lisp is pretty bad. It's very bad language. If you really look at, com you know, compared to all the language, compared to Python, PHP, Ruby, okay, even compared to JavaScript, today with JavaScript 2015, Emacs Lisp is possibly worse, worse than PHP. Even PHP has grown a lot, you know, in the past 20 years. You know, uh, you know, uh, look at you know, look up, uh, look look at my uh, those two uh, YouTube videos. You know, you watch them. So Elisp is so bad anyway. So they they don't see things, you know, the way I see. But anyway, so that's a lot of random talk. So that um, th thank you, Kidrick. So if you like my stuff, <laughs> put 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 money in my bank, okay? I I got PayPal, and, you know, Patreon, or buy my Emacs book, buy my JavaScript book, JavaScript in depth, and thanks to Alan, I think Alan and another guy who has you know bought my you know website, and and some of you donated. Thank you guys. Uh. uh okay, so let's see what what more comments. 
the links are all, all on my website somewhere you know you can easily find it just go to my blog you'll find my PayPal and stuff links um, yeah like, so that's about language server Ansermen I don't know much about that I, I forgot what that is uh, Eclipse IDE has proper okay so actually company okay uh, Boilerplate, okay. Uh, show that. What is that? Bar until. So that's why you use Groovy and Grady to do dependency resolutions. What is. Groovy is the Perl like language on Java, right? I don't know what is Grady, Seamus. Uh, and what do you mean dependency resolution? I'm not sure what that is. Uh, so Bethlehem Muse says is Java. By the way, another there's another major problem, pra practical problem when you use regular expression to pass to do syntax coloring. This happens often. For example, in this file. Uh, if if I I missed a, a quote, let's say, all the syntax coloring becomes wrong in the rest of the file. <laughs> when you miss a, a a a quote, and also when you have a regular expression, for example, in JavaScript or Python, when you have a regular expression complicated, that tends to screw up the whole the rest you know the rest of the buffer syntax coloring. These are problems, you know. These are limitations of of Emacs, you know. Syntax coloring. I I know how it works. I mean, you you can work around, but there's a lot of work. You know, you can you can work around so that doesn't happen, but it's it gets very complicated. Uh, to write to you know to do the Emacs Lisp code. Uh, so. So let's see what else. CTO, yeah, that's the word. CTO. Uh, oh God, more more comments than I thought. I'm gonna answer all comments. So starting with CTO. Okay, so starting here, D Dion says that. Okay, so uh, tech leads are supposed to be experienced programmers that can artfully. Artfully navigate technical problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have a question for me, type my name. I'll answer those. Oh, Gaudi is a build system for Java. It's written in Groovy. Okay, <laughs> looks like you are a Groovy coder. Uh, Seamus. Seamus, where are you from? What uh, country or city? So Dion says my interaction with such people are limited. I guess some of them know what you are doing, others don't. I would guess leaders just good at programming. C CTO are typically, you know, programmers turned, turned, uh, you know, the lead programmer essentially. Well, in in a small company, the whole company is just five people. Okay, so so if you have five people, you have CEO, the founder. Okay, CEO. Then you have, you know, let's say three programmers. If you are the lead programmer, you are the CTO. Okay. Then, then another guy sells people, marketing, whatever, you know, things like that. Uh, you know, in Silicon Valley, it's a startup world. It's like that. You know, back then in 1998, I'm in a company brain power. The whole company is like five people, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm whatever title I'm, uh, whatever you know, whatever title you want. Uh, uh, 
Okay, that's it for today. I do, I'm I'm getting tired. So that's it. Any anything else? Any, so if you have a question, you have ten seconds to address. You know, study something. Then we're gonna close down. We shut down in thirty seconds. So Dion says famous bragged that he made money off Emacs. So Sima says I'm from New York, USA. Hey, uh, so New York, New York, USA. If the big decimal fits, well, it groovy. <laughs> Bye, guys.